Oh yeah, Black Sun in the hizzle. Oh, the shizzle, dizzle. We got an excellent show here today, but first I want to say the views and opinions and that of the arena does not reflect that of the people at People's TV is staff of volunteers. And the views of Black Sun does not reflect that of the arena. We are a council. And the views of Black Sun reflects that of Donald Trump and his supporters, White Power. <laughs> White Power? Oh, I'm sorry. Don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Introduce panel to my right. Kevin. It's uh, good to be back on the arena. Yes, I uh, really like, you know, that we were able to relocate and Absolutely. everything. Um, my name is Kevin Karen. I do some work with the uh, Georgia Detention Watch and the Shut Down Stewart movement. It's the movement to shut down Stewart Detention Center, uh, which is... A detention center that we will talk about today. All right. Hi, thank you for having me tonight here at your show. And my name is Laura Morales, Laura Lorena Morales Martinez. All right. Um, I'm here um, with Kevin. He invited me. We were at uh, November 21st. We were down in Stewart Detention Center in a visual protest to shut down Stewart Detention Center. Okay. And we're here to talk about shutting it down and, of course, a lot of immigration that's going on here with. The 2016 election. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> okay, my name is Vincent Cheeks, entertainer, actor, activist, all around good guy. Thank you for tuning in to the Arena Uncensored tonight. Don't forget you are the ghetto messiah. Oh yeah, I am the ghetto messiah. You already <laughs> know what time it is. <laughs> and of course, that be your Hebrew, Gidon Ben Yashara All, uh, the radicalized Hebrew on the panel. I thank you, uh, Black, for allowing me in the midst. Well, I thank you there, Gideon. <laughs> thank you for sorting some white supremacy. <laughs> now, I want to, because, you know, last week we talked about domestic terrorism. The week before that we talked about Saudi Arabia yeah, and the whole yeah. issue, right, of Muslims and immigration. But, you know, we have a domestic. Now, it's funny how we have terrorism to deal with domestic terrorism. Now we got immigration and we deal with domestic immigration because I consider our brothers and sisters on the border, you know, our family. Right. But I don't consider, you know, a bitch, you know, we got Donald Trump talking about gonna build a wall, <laughs> kick out all the Muslims. I mean, like, what, what's going on here, y'all? Uh, sounds like good old fashioned American racism to me. <laughs> uh, Kevin mentioned the uh, Stewart Detention Center. Uh, we're gonna get into some of the things that have been going on down there. Uh, it's a lot of controversy surrounding this Stewart Detention Center. We're basically uh, about two and a half hours south of Atlanta, correct? Uh, and they they house uh, illegal immigrants, if you will. A lot of them. We prefer are, undocumented. Un undocumented in, uh, immigrants. I'm excuse excuse me. Let me be politically correct. Mm. <laughs> undocumented. Um, they've had hunger strikes, right? To protest against the deplorable conditions there. Um, they've conducted worker stoppages to protest the lack of due process, the poor food, the inadequate medical care, overcrowding, and unhygienic living conditions. Uh, so what's going on down at Stewart, Kevin, and what do they want? What do they want to happen at Stewart? Why is all this going on? Well, uh First of all, I come, for the, uh, I come from the perspective as an organizer, so I'm going to share my perspective, but okay. I'll also share the kind of uh, the way that the organizing goes. Um, a lot of us that do this work on Stewart Detention Center see this as part of the mass incarceration problem that we have in the United States. The U.S. has 5% of the world's population right. and 25% of its prisoners. Right. Uh, we jail more people than any nation on earth, and uh, we think that this process needs to be put to a stop. Um, more people than China, I might add. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. More people than China. More people than Russia. More people than uh, North Korea. Um, Combined. Uh, but how is that? We're the maybe, land of the free. What are well, you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> We're the land of the free. I, I think when people start to dig, right? Because uh, actually, there was an interesting conversation Great that point. we were having um, with some folks who were who were talking about, you know, some of the fights between the U.S. China, Russia, some of the international struggles that happen on the political level. Right. And uh, the question that I like to ask is, what would the mainstream media be saying about Russia if they had, 
if they were jailing uh, 25% of the prisoners in the world who were all black and brown folks, who <laughs> were all, I mean, we would use this as a huge point to say, you know, we need to go uh, expand NATO and invade Russia. I mean, we're doing that anyway. But, uh, <laughs> but, <Through proxy. laughs> um, the point is that we don't look at ourselves enough. Uh, the United States, uh, the mainstream media, um, we don't spend a whole lot of time studying our nation and, and what it is. Uh, and so I think if you start to look at some of the things happening in the United States, you'll see that, you know, when we came over as a settler colonialist nation, and I say we, I mean the Europeans, right? right. Uh, white folks. Right. When we came to the United States, immediately there was a need for cheap labor in order to develop a society and so i think that began with colonialism you brought indentured servants that didn't work out so well right. then of course we uh killed off the native population to right. a large degree and uh and and attempted to enslave the native population it was not possible because they all knew each other mm -hmm. and so then there was this process of obviously the african uh, slave trade and that was a process of actually breaking up communities right. and taking them over one at a time so that people spoke different languages. Right. Um, and it's a really insidious process. Well, that eventually became overcome through struggle. And Jim Crow was Jim, established. Jim Crow. To, right, I, I see you shaking your head. <laughs> Honey, yeah, Jim Crow Jim was Crow. established. So when I say it became overcome, it transformed. Right. Uh, we had to call it something right. else. <laughs> Capitalism. No. And uh, I would say that, that, again, Jim Crow transformed. Uh, when I say Jim Crow, separate laws, separate but equal, even though it wasn't really equal. That process transformed again into this process of putting, locking people up. Mm -hmm. First of all, you convict them of a crime or you make them plead guilty to a crime. Mm -hmm. And uh, you lock them up. And then you create a class of people that everybody can say, well, they they did a crime, they did something wrong. If I do all the right things, Demon I'll be okay. Them. And and it creates a whole class of people that become, again, cheap labor to keep the system going. This right. is my view. And, right. uh, okay. Well, it sounds pretty right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It sounds pretty on point. Yeah. So all that is to say that Stewart Detention Center is another part of this process of uh, y you because immigrant labor has often been used to keep the system going and then when when immigrants start to start to become a threat to a uh, European majority in the United States <laughs> uh, there are folks out there and I'm talking really really right-wing folks who were part of the KKK who right. have white there's power. a guy named John Tantum I'm, I'm not kidding he's yeah. white power all the way yeah. but he's behind a lot of these organizations there's an organization called Numbers USA and they put a really glossy argument on it but what they are basically saying is we need to keep this nation majority white uh, otherwise we're gonna lose control don't forget Christian <laughs> yeah well and Christian um, and uh, but I will, I will say... And heterosexual. I, I know you won't like this. Okay, but no. I will say that um, a, lot, a lot of people who do identify as Christian are very much involved in this movement to shut down the Stewart Detention Center. Because uh, Christianity is, you know, two ways, right? Uh, religion can go two ways, or many ways. But, <laughs> yeah, um, it's more than two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the point that I was trying to make, sorry, is that... The goal here is to literally shut down the facility. We don't think this should be happening. I mean, I can tell you all the reasons that you should shut down Stewart, but I should also emphasize that I don't think that putting people in cages solves any problems. It just creates more. Okay. Right. Thank you, Kevin. Let me bring in our guest, Laura Lorena Morales Martinez. Did I get out of that right? Yes. <laughs> Thank you for being here on the show today. Thank I really you guys appreciate it. Thanks for having it. me. <clears throat> and now you just heard Kevin give the rundown of all the deplorable things that go on at Stewart Detention Center. Tell us about your experience with uh, Stewart Detention Center and why you think they should be shut down. And then we're going to bring you in, Gideon. Well, in 2008, my husband was uh, detained in Cobb County, Georgia, okay. for simply driving without a driver's license. Um, he spent a week in county jail. And because he was an undocumented immigrant, he um, was transferred to Stewart Detention Center, which he spent about a month there. And I, I just, I can't wrap my head around simply for driving without a driver's license. People are being um, 
sent over to a place where, you know, they're trying to escape from. You right. know, poverty <clears throat> down there in Mexico, a lot of um, crime that's going down there, gangs that are trying to, you know, lure people in. So I just, I really need to, we really need to shut down <laughs> Stuart Immigration <laughs> Detention there because it's separating families. It's tearing apart, you know, um, the fathers with their children. You right. know, people build their their life here. They, they buy houses. They have... Um, they um, have jobs here. They've right. done companies. And now, one might say that, you know, because I know Trump is trying to rally up, like, you know, the immigrants are here taking the jobs. And by you saying, okay, you have a house that could have been a quote unquote American white Christian could have had a house, or maybe your husband is taking away the job. That's the platform you're basically going to use. Right. He's yeah, going to say that, Trump. you know, that, that's the number one thing. The play on the working class is that your jobs. We already don't have jobs. Right. We have homelessness, and now all these immigrants are going to come take the jobs. You know. But quite frankly, I feel we do the jobs no one wants to do. I mm. that that's what I feel, and we do cheap labor. We come from a country where they pay us two dollars an hour. Here, where they're paying us six, five dollars, six, seven dollars, so yeah, yeah, we uh, think we're getting up. fifteen, right. twenty dollars an hour here. So that's, that's why a different perspective. Exactly. That's why we're yeah. gonna take the jobs. That's until now to kick well, Sam the TPP. Well, let me ask you this <laughs> before we move on to no, brother no, go getting ahead. Go, here. Continue. Um, you said your husband got stopped and arrested for simply not having a license. But you do realize that not having a license in this country is a huge deal. Like, if I got stopped without a license, I'm going to jail. Okay. No, I, no questions asked, no do not pass, go and collect $200, I'm going to jail. Right. You go to jail, but after you pay your bond, after you serve your time, you get to go back to your normal life. Right. Here, you get stopped for simply driving a driver's license, going to work to get money for your ha for your you know your your wife, your children, right, to pay right, your mortgage, right. your rent, groceries, and you're gonna get sent back to Mexico or Guatemala to or Salvador, right. and everything that you've built here for your family for you is taken away with the blink of an eye. Right. And just a quick question. You can get a driver's license in Georgia, right? Yes. True. So, I think, Lorena, you, I mean, you have a different story about that, right? Right. If you, here in Georgia, undocumented immigrants are not allowed to get a driver's license because they do not have a social security number. So here, okay. um, and, and that's that's another point. There's a, I know a lot of my friends who could are 15, 16, 18, 20 year old, who can go down to the DMV get their driver's license? But they they're they're taking that privilege for granted. All right, I know Gideon got some questions, but I got to come in here now. One might argue, and like I said, this is from Watson's point of view, that what makes our country great here is having Social Security. The system that sets it up makes it so great, and so we might have this fear that. By you guys changing the system, it's making it much like Mexico. It will end up like Mexico as far as the economic, as far as the, I mean, this is what they rally. <laughs> Kevin, this is what they say. I mean. Well, oh, they go. say those things. Yeah, they I think, say those things, right. Well, I think, I think the point is to, to spread a lot of lies. Uh, I, okay. I pulled up this article like right after you talked about it. This is left and right agree immigrants don't take American jobs. Oh. Uh, this is a detailed, you know. Uh, article that features multiple reports from both the Brookings Institute, a more quote-unquote left-wing, even though it's a neoliberal institution that believes in, in instituting things like NATO and stuff like that, okay. and, and also has uh, reports from more right-wing associations like the uh, CAP uh, study. Um, I'm missing the actual source there. Oh, American Enterprise Institute. American Enterprise Institute, this is more way right wing, like both of them agree that uh, immigrants don't take American jobs. And this right. is a, this is commonly a tool for blaming a certain class of people so that the wealthy and the powerful <laughs> and the ones who are really responsible don't actually have to take any of the heat from the horrible conditions 
in the United States on the whole. And I'm glad you said that because most, some might, might argue say most American jobs are going to India and China. Right. But. Get in, jump in. Yeah, jump in, get in, you know. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting as the elder uh, statesman on the panel, and I've been listening, I, what you echoed, uh, Ms. Martinez, is what Vicente Fox, the former president of Mexico, indicated under the Bush administration that uh, the Latino people were taking jobs that nobody wanted. But in effect, we as the former and present slaves in America <laughs> did do those jobs. Right. And we built our communities on those jobs. I don't have any problem with Latino people. I've worked with them and among them. You're beautiful. You have uh, family ties, the whole nine. But we do, too. We are a people that have always loved our families. But we're under attack in this country. You know, my question would reflect upon uh, there's this issue of Donald Trump in this country right now yeah. and his uh, in the pronouncements of uh, alienating uh, Muslims and then in Mexicans and, and Mexicans anybody else is not supposed to be here according to him absolutely yeah. and then when we look at the issue in San Bernardino mm -hmm. it was a Latino that purchased the guns for the so-called radicalized Muslims that uh, they this is what the news has pronounced. So when we look at detention centers and we look at the American fervor for enslavement, incarceration, right. and detainment, what would be you and Kevin, and I'd really like to hear the whole panel's perspective on uh, Trump's uh, pronouncement this connection between the Latino and as well as the so-called radicalized Muslims and uh, your stay in this country? Well, <laughs> that's a lot to throw. Yeah, uh, well, I, I would, okay, so I want to be very careful not to just focus on Donald Trump, although right, I right, think right, that right. there's a lot of importance there. I'm really glad you asked about it. Yeah. But uh, I will say that, that part of my feeling about this is, first of all, which president has deported more uh, uh, Latino <laughs> people than any country, than any other president in history, by far? Which president chief. has been the deporter in chief? Which president has been horrible to undocumented folks in this country? That is Barack Obama. Barack, boom, boom, Obama. Obama. And that is, that is uh, the Barack Obama of the Democratic Party, right. who has done very little uh, for... Uh, undocumented folks in the last eight years, even at the beginning when they controlled both houses and controlled the presidency, they didn't do anything. Yeah. And this was the same Barack Obama that went and when he uh, when he was rallying for president, you know, he called upon uh, folks. And I want to be careful not to just say Latino people because right. there are immigrants from all over in this country. And in fact, this yeah. process of deporting people. They don't deport people who are of the European variety, Correct. but they do deport plenty of people yeah, back yeah. to different countries Haiti, in no, thank Africa, you. Now, Africa, Africa, Africa Caribbean, Caribbean yeah. stuff like that. Hang on, I just oh, want to okay, make one okay. more point. But my point on Donald Trump is I don't know that there's a conspiracy and that he's planning to do this, but I think the effect of Donald Trump is it's, it, it scares a lot of folks who are worried about immigration policy back into the Democratic Party. Because the Democrats didn't do anything for them. I think, they, I think that <laughs> folks have a good reason to say, well, I'm not going to vote Democrat. Maybe I'll look at the Green Party and vote Jill Stein. Maybe I'll look somewhere else to, to spend my vote. Donald Trump scares everybody back into the Democratic Party. Uh, and I think it works. I mean, I'm, you know, because you're right. If we, if we elect somebody like Donald Trump or any Republican, then, uh, yeah, immigration is going to be even worse than it already he, is. He's leading in the polls. So somebody, somebody's out there is listening to what he's saying and, and agreeing with what he's saying because he's been leading in the polls since July. Sure. And, and, I, and that's why we're here to make a point and educate people about immigration. I like not, that. not just say, oh, I came, you know, I came here when I was four years old. From? From Mexico. Okay. And my family came here. Why? Because, you know, we were living in a very poverty we were living in poverty right you know and my dad said hey we need a better life for my kids for his daughter for his son what do you do he risked his life to get here 
uh, uh, most of immigrants, Mo- all say, of the immigrants, of them, yeah, yeah, they, risk. they risk their lives getting here just to have a better future and a better life for their family. And that's why we're here. It's it's not just, oh, I'm I'm a criminal just because I came here without a, doc, a passport or my citizen or my visa. No, I... Well, what I'd like to say, yeah, that, that doesn't work here on the arena, trying to demonize the Hispanics. Again, my question would be this, because the first thing people, I mean, they've been rattling this since the 80s, talking about, you know, go back to Mexico, this and that and the other. And I'm thinking, what has caused the economy and I guess the government to be so bad in Mexico where people have to migrate out? Is it, I mean, what is... Corruption? Maybe. I mean, getting what well, we know that being specifically. I mean, we, we yeah. grew up here. Somebody can say we grew up here. You know. Well, you asked the question. We, let her answer. Oh, okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, I mean, to be honest, I came here when I was four, so okay. I don't know how Mexico is, but it, okay. it, it is. I hear all the time corruption, poverty. And it's not just Mexico. People migrate from Colombia, That's right. from yeah. Venezuela, That's Syria, Asia. Yeah. Um, I think. Is just Haiti. maybe mm-hmm. because this is the land of freedom and we want freedom. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, I would well, I would I would add that uh, you know there, there's uh, some folks that work on what's called the root causes of migration, right. and uh, usually there's two points to be made. One is the economic. Uh, co- the economic reason, people leaving their homes because there are not economic opportunities there, and the other one is war and. Uh, that people leave as refugees. Well, I can when, understand the war part, but <laughs> well, when we take Mexico, what? Is that a war? Is it? I mean, no. I know it's oh, a drug no. war, but I mean, yes, it, drug. Well, well, hang on. Okay. In Ayotzinapa, you know, uh, thirty-nine students were disappeared. And yes. This, yes. This is this is actually an ongoing thing. Absolutely. Um, right. And I just I met with a, a friend. Her name is uh, Belin um, from yeah. Mexico, Gotta and her brother was one who was disappeared. Not one of the thirty-nine. This, these disappearances have been going on constantly. Right. right. Now, who arms Mexico? Who gives the weapons Would that to be Mexico? Uh, that's the United yeah, States. Yeah, I'm like uh, that's the number over right. here. Right. And and it's not just Mexico. It's all of Central America and Latin America as well. Saudi, Arabia. Saudi Arabia, Israel. Mm-hmm. The list um, goes on. Ice. Absolutely. Know, right. Absolutely. <laughs> so, when we look at okay, so there's also the influx of of uh, there's also the economic issue. So the United States, after World War II, was the greatest power in the world, and they started instituting policies that would benefit us and would basically keep other nations subordinate. And one is these free trade agreements. So, right. so NAFTA, right, the North American Free Trade Agreement, says that we're going to give our U.S. farmers a bunch of subsidies, so we're going to use American taxpayers to pay the farmers to produce a bunch of excess corn. We don't need it all. Right. Then we're going to take cheap corn and we're going to sell it in Mexico, in Honduras, in Guatemala, right. in Colombia. And then all those, all those farmers, those people who are farming there go, well, we can't compete with these mega huge corporations that are right. producing really cheap corn and bring it into our country. So all of a sudden they don't have jobs and they don't have, it destroys local economies. And then they look for other places to go and they say, well, that place that's making all the corn looks pretty good. And uh, so that's one reason. And the other reason is that when you get poor and you say, well, these policies aren't good, we should keep this grain out of here. Some people resist against that. They resist against these neo- these policies that allow us to sell cheap goods there. And uh, they say we should have our own economy. And then the government gets money from us to say, to, to go and fight and say, we're gonna kill off all you people because we don't agree. We should be able to exploit this area, these resources, and sell our cheap goods there. So war and poverty cause people to go to areas. You know, Vince has been trying to get in here. Sorry, I'm talking a lot. No, (laughs) No, no. you're fine, you're fine. I wanted to go back. um, I wanted to address what she said about the immigrants that come from Mexico aren't criminals, right? Because they don't have their paperwork. And I wanted to get her thoughts on Trump's assessment that Mexico, Mexican immigrants bring nothing but drugs and crime and they're murderers and rapists and a few 
Mike Goodwin sprinkled into the murderers and rapists. Is what he said. Well, it's it's um. Let's say I was assaulted by a white guy or Asian guy or African American, right. and I was assaulted. I you know I was raped, whatever, and then. From there, all of, all of a sudden, automatically, I'm going to think, oh, my gosh, there's a white guy. I have to fear him because he assaulted me. Or, oh, there's a black guy. I have to fear him because he assaulted me. So, no, never in my life have I stepped into jail, have I done drugs, have I, you know, the worst I've done was detention don't slip. Tell yourself. No, <laughs> like, don't tell on yourself. No. Don't tell on yourself. The worst I've done was a <laughs> detention slip. And. All my family, they try the most to be on such a good, you know, not to go speeding because of a police officer could pull them over. We live in this constant fear where we have to, you know, walk on eggshells egg and behave because if we do something bad or illegal, oh, they're undocumented. They're immigrants. Oh, all these illegal immigrants, uh, all these aliens are coming in and making crimes. So that's where I stand just because one someone from there's a hundred Mexicans and one of them commit commits a crime all of a sudden all of the hundred Mexicans are criminals because one Mexican did something wrong now let me let me ask this and it's in regards to I guess civil rights and human rights and I'm going to direct it to you and then the rest of the panel can chime in but when if you if you enter a country illegally does that not lend oneself to forfeiting i don't want to say their civil rights but a certain amount of rights because you're entering a country Ill illegally like for instance if i went into i don't know iran mm -hmm. illegally I would have a pretty good idea going in that if I get caught over here without paperwork, it's going to be some pretty dire consequences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So do you think that you forfeit a certain amount of rights entering a country illegally? Yeah, and I'm pretty sure my parents thought about that when they risked themselves coming over they know the risks right. they didn't just wake up one morning honey let's go to the USA no they thought about it they thought about what's we're gonna leave my grandparents they're gonna leave my grandparents behind it's been 20 years okay my grandfather passed away my mother couldn't go to the funeral Damn. my grandma is very ill wow. my mom can't go visit her because she she made that decision to leave everything behind for mm. her to come here to escape poverty, to give her children a better education because the education in Mexico is not the best. Right. It's really not the best. So mm -hmm. we know, my family know, and now I know that I have given up some rights because I, he, I came here risking, my parents brought me here, and I'm deciding to stay here. I know I'm risking a lot, but I know it's, it's, it's going to be better for me, better for my family. And it, it's fine. I don't mind walking on next shows because I'm a good person. I, right. I don't, I'm not thinking about, oh, man, I can't do this drug because they're going to catch me. Right, and right, right. No. Let me just say this. And uh, as a emigre, as a refugee, as an individual that's been enslaved and our descendants are still enslaved in America, the vast majority of America and the world have been captured by propaganda. See, that's the one thing that when I travel to Africa, I've been to Mexico, and when I looked, I didn't see poverty. What I saw were families that were united by the common bond of survival. And that survival was predicated upon thousands of years of historical enrichment from their culture. But when you use America as a backdrop based on the lies, propaganda, and the uh, media images that they have portrayed, what people believe is better is a better life doesn't necessarily equate to that. That's why we're taught this program is about a detention center. America is a death camp. America Ooh. is polluting the air, wow. is polluting the environment, 
their families here. Uh, abortion, we talked about last week, is at an all-time high. It makes individuals selfish where they forget their roots, and it creates this ideology of capitalism at all costs. It dehumanizes other races and promotes the, the, the talents that are based on economic gain. And it, it, so when we look at what has happened to America and its people, when we look at your country or the countries that are in Africa or other countries around the world, as people risk their lives to get here for what they claim is a better life, is only a temporary uh, transformation for monetary gain. In essence, they've come into a criminal enterprise because that's exactly what America is. Now, again, you make a very good point because I'm thinking, you know, we talk about corruption. You know, now we talk about a growth of the Latino population, you know, not only with communities, but, you know, with TV stations, but in the politics. Right. So who's to say that the same type of politics that has corrupted Mexico won't corrupt here? I don't know. Well, it is. Well, see, the other thing is, and let me just no, no, say this what briefly. Saying, right, what I'm saying is that the biggest fear is, like, okay, like what I'm saying is what is causing the poverty in Mexico, you say corruption, so what type of corruption? Like, what type of policies, like, you know? I, I don't agree that it's corruption. I mean, unless, okay. unless you- Yeah, because I'm thinking it has to be something more, I guess, like, what I'm saying is like, like economic. Well, it's the devaluing of the historical culture that has existed for thousands of years based okay, on looking it, at the American image. So is it the corporations? Well, it's trying to compete with what the corporations have created through their synthesizing of products that has made, because Mexican people have some of the most natural, wholesome people. When you talk about maize and corn, right. they created a, a strain and the genetic code for original corn products from thousands of years. But see, I want to go back briefly to this issue of what America has become, pornography, child prostitution, enslavement. See, all of these things are the ugly underbelly so again, of these say, corporations. Would you say that the corporations, because what I'm hearing is that, you know, people in Mexico, they're hearing that there's this great big dream. Like exactly. You so, exactly. You know, Kevin talked about the TPP. Right. So, they're migrating over here because of low wages. And so what I'm asking, will the low wages become low here eventually? Because we got so many people all around coming. It's in. called inflation. The oh, dollar now right. is devalued to so such an extent. So you see Trump's argument as crazy and as lunatic he might sound, this is still the rhetoric saying, okay, we eventually, the immigrants are coming here. Right. And then we're going to end up like a third world because now we have to compete. We've got to lower our wages. Really? Well, America no, is a like third all world. Money, all this money that this well, country it's, has, it's, it's monopoly. Even they say we have a trillion dollar debt. Come on, man. Yeah, exactly. No, I, I hear you, Vince. <laughs> well, I hear you, but, but I mean, uh, it's, 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 he's spiking in the polls. Well, so see, somebody, the, somebody so, believes so that. So are you saying that there may be a direct correlation with a mass amount of immigrants coming in and bring and pulling the American economy down. No, that is the rhetoric. Well, that what it people, is, it go no, that is the rhetoric that people are buying into. Yeah, they you are know, buying into I, it. The arena we only met present a small minute, and if we if we will get in, no. Uh, See, uh, uh, those, my my brother okay, brought in vote? the point of the okay. imprisonment. See, what you have to understand, what bolsters the economy of this country. It was be free labor from the beginning. The new Jim Crow right. is the, is the, in, the, the uh, detainment of individuals and being uh, not paid wages for their work and the imprisonment of individuals that are made to work at for pennies on the dollar, but they're working for major corporations in their imprisonment. So there's been nothing changed. And so uh, even though they're talking about immigration being a problem, they want these people to come in so they can that. intern them and I'm continue to use that. them as an economic tool. In fact, I, you already know this term. What was it when during Reconstruction where we set you free, but uh, you have to pay for the tools? Right. What would they call that? 
Uh, well, it's a sharecropping. Sharecropping. That's what that sounds <laughs> it's like. It's never modern, changed. Would you say it's modern day sharecropping? Uh, it absolutely it is. is. Yeah. And see, that's why these young intellectuals, even though when you come to America and you look beautiful and it's, it's clean on the outside, it's that underbelly that you don't see. The taxes are being paid for by the imprisonment of hundreds of thousands of people who haven't done anything. And they're killing, they're turning babies into prostitutes, and it continues to cycle on and on, and the money is the only goal. Okay, let's get back to uh, Stewart Detention Center here. All right. I want to let the people know some of the, a little bit about Stewart. Um, like Kevin said earlier, it's the largest immigration detention center in the country. It's a seven. It's a 1,752-bed medium security pre prison facility. You know, it's supposed to be for yeah. detainees, but it's a prison-like facility. Um, they've been compared to a human zoo. Uh, in one pod that houses some of the detainees, it's the size of a basketball court, and they have 66 people, three toilets, three urinal, mm. urinals, and five showers. Mm. Wow. Mm. Um, there's been a total abuse of power by the uh, COs there, Absolutely. and the uh, detainees complain that they don't have a meaningful grievance procedure, mm -hmm. meaning if something happens to them, they get abused, and they don't have a, a meaningful grievance procedure like they might be able to go tell a higher up but they might get turned away or get treated worse right for that matter but right then somebody could make the argument because there's no secret our prisons are all credit right right okay so we have illegal immigrants so where do we house them if we arrest them do we continue to pack up rice street and cobb county or well, well i don't, do I don't we think we need to to House them. Well, I mean, they're not, they're not, they're not, they're not arrested. They're not under arrest, correct? Well, I mean, no, well, they're being they, held. Been, yeah, they've, they've been, been arrested, detained, but they yeah, haven't been. been go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry, Vince. They've they're been being arrested. detained. Away. Oh, well, what I'm saying is, that, okay, you got the general, just to jail, right? Right. Commit a crime, you ain't got a license, you go to jail. So, one might argue that they're overcrowding an already overcrowded jail and prison system. So right. then we need to separate them from the already overcrowded prisons and jails that we have. Okay. Because Kevin just said, we're the largest incarcerators in the world. Right. We also have the largest detainee infrastructure in the world. Thank you. Yes, we do. So why have immigrants on top of that? Well, see, this is the Let thing. Go. go ahead. <laughs> I okay, like that I mean, Hey, you okay. heard it here first, Lord Lorraine. Well, uh, Lord that, that's an go. ancient uh, term where let my people go, Pharaoh. <laughs> <laughs> right. But see, this is the issue. America has conditioned everybody to live in urban areas that they control. That's one thing about the Latino community and the Hebrew community, our African descendant, we know how to live off the land. We, there's many thousands of acres that are uninhabited, but you can't you just go in and what they, we call squat in this country. But they're getting into it, now I gotta, now I gotta, now you're making me argue the other side. I hear what you're saying. Yes. But you got, and let's just look at Syria. I, I don't want to deter from the conversation, but let's just look at Syria. They are running from a war, savage place. So I hear what you're saying. Let's live off the land, eat nuts and berries. But there's real atrocities going on. Certainly. 41 students kidnapped. So what I'm saying is it's not only just, I mean, they have to escape from violence, Gideon. So let's be realistic here. So what I'm trying to. Who's perpetrating the violence? And therein lies the question, who's selling the guns to El Chapo? How did he uh, uh, escape and create one of the largest drug cartels in the world? So when we look at this issue of the detention centers, and even in Chicago, what they had is, and what was revealed because Rahm Emanuel is getting ready to get ousted, they had a underground prison facility, another detention center Black side, yeah. that um, nobody even knew about. Home and Square. Exactly. Right. That they've taken thousands of out black and brown people to without due yeah. process. So what we're finding here, once again, well, okay, that was we our got own Muslims. detainee center. Thank you. That was our own detainee center. That, that, well, we, that isn't here, even Gideon. on the chart here. Wait a minute here, Gideon. We got domestic terrorists here. You understand? Look at San Bernardino, California. What kind of precaution are we going to put? We need some of these black sites to interrogate some of these Muslims here. White power? No. Oh, <laughs> let me, no I'm just let saying, me, though. Let me ask uh, Ms. Moreno a mm -hmm. question here. 
you do know that um, Stewart is not run by the government, right? Private. It's not run by the feds. So how do you feel about prisons and these detention centers being run by Freedom private Lake, corporations? Hmm. Walmart. Mm, that's right. The same people that y'all run the that well, let me just say the people that same people that provide the jobs are actually um, running the jails too. Exactly. Okay. What do you mean the same people? Walmart, the corporations like Corporation, Walmart, Frito yeah. Lay, yes. uh, Kellogg's, they, they these Monsanto, are, yeah, they fund Monsanto, detaining uh, uh, Chiquita Banana. Yes, they all. What, what Vince is saying is a fact that the government is not these corporations are not only offering jobs on one hand, they're incarcerating you on the other. So you're and socks, profiting off of the incarceration. Yeah. So my question is, how do you feel about the corporate, private corporations running the detention center? Well, I feel mad. I guess. <laughs> right. It's a good I, feel, a good emotion. Yeah. To I start. mean, I, I, I don't, I can't really. I feel that there's always someone in the government behind it. Mm -hmm. Wait, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I technically, I can't. I don't. I don't. Be because I don't they feel have 100. the uh, corrections corporations of, of America is who runs through a detention center, That's and right. they had to get the contract from the government exactly in order to run the detention. So center. I think what the government is doing is, oh, let's let's give the blame to someone else. Right. Thank you. I'm glad you said right. That. So that I think it's it's. The government because itself. that's a way for the government to say, "Look, we don't, we don't clean. even have our hands on it. Right? It's these guys, corrections corporations of America, who you need to, to point it. And then mm -hmm. the corrections corporations of America, they don't really have oversight commission, like people that that mm -hmm. regularly check up on them and yes. make sure. Even when the ACLU went in, Kevin, they had problems uh, doing their report and their investigation because there was. Uh, pushback from Stewart Detention Center. Yeah, yeah, jump in here. Yeah, yeah. I, well, hear I was I was actually personally removed from Stewart Detention Center That's during right. a visitation. What? Uh, I was arrested. I was well. I was arrested twice yeah. at a protest, but I was actually removed from the detention center. I wasn't arrested, but I was okay. actually removed during a visitation for asking. This is what the the actual CO said: asking inappropriate questions. Oh, wow. They do not have any type of uh, form or anything that clarifies what questions you are or are not right. allowed to ask. Mm -hmm. um, I was asking questions about conditions in the facility following an uprising in September. There were hunger strikes right. and there were work stoppages because they're made to work for one to four dollars a day. That's mm -hmm. right. As you mentioned, pennies right. on the dollar. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was asking. You know these individuals. Uh, you know, tell me, tell me what what happened because they they were made to stay in their pods and on their beds mm. for three straight days, mm. and mm. they got a bologna sandwich at eight a.m. in the morning <laughs> right. and a bologna sandwich at eight a. eight p.m. in the mm. evening. Mm. They were wow. taken one by one to use a restroom or go and shower, mm. and. Uh, and, and this was all after they sent in their special operations response team, which is a private <laughs> corporation-run <laughs> SWAT team. Exactly. Oh, yeah. They're running SWAT teams? They, it's, oh, yeah. it's, it's, oh, called, it's called a SORT team. Yes. It's a special operations response team. It's yeah. not a SWAT team. SWAT team would be... They you know, SWAT you, though. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, they came in with riot gear on. Exactly. Uh, they shot... Uh, pepper balls, like yeah. like uh, rubber bullets filled with pepper spray. Oh, right. wow. And okay. um, multiple, I have multiple reports that there are actually vents on the ceiling that release gas right. to suppress yeah. the uh, actual, the, the hunger strikes and work stoppages. And in one unit, they did have several wait, people. Wait, 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 wait. They secrete a gas That's right. to make mm -hmm. people uh, They have stop vents the on the ceiling in the facility mm -hmm. where they gas everybody mm -hmm. in order to, and I mean, these guys uh, were telling me that they grabbed their stuff off their beds yeah. and made masks right. in order to be able to breathe, breathe right. and not suffocate. And at least one, one individual had to be sent to the hospital because he had asthma and almost died. Kevin, Seems a little well, a person can make the same argument and say they had these in the regular prisons also. Oh, oh sure. I mean, mm -hmm. some of the regular prisons, and I don't yeah. mean, one right. thing that I want to be very careful about is I don't want to draw a difference 
between the detention centers and the prison. Exactly. I want right. to show you how similar they yeah, are. Yeah, exactly. Right. Right. I mean, right. the stuff that they the do, monster. the stuff that they do in Guantanamo. Yes. Where did where did those where did those people Techniques who were torturing come people from. come from? Yeah. They came from the Philadelphia prison where uh, Mumia is being held. Yes. Yes. Right. So they learn it in Over these prison here. systems. Yeah. So I want to show you how similar they actually are. Speak to the issue of the corporations and their uh, financial gain from these right. I'm, I'm detentions. Glad, Go ahead, sir. I'm glad you said that. Financial gain right. from these corporate privatized prisons. Yes. Okay. Like $20 for a phone call So I, talk, I Come talk, on, talked about cor corrections corporations of America, and they've been around roughly since 1983. Um, That's when the... Uh, Population starts to spike to the war on drugs. Yeah, right. the war on drugs. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, the war, yeah, on, the war right. on us. <laughs> right, right. Um, so, at the end of 2012, Corrections Cor Corporations of America, their annual income was roughly 1.7 billion dollars. Mm. Okay, Absolutely. and also over the past couple of years, they've spent 17 million do dollars lobbying to defeat prison legislation. Hmm. Lobbying to d shoot down stricter restrictions on right. the de uh, their activities. The, right, right. <laughs> They're paying all this money, seventeen million dollars, to so they can continue to do what they do. Right. So. And if uh, you know the the uh, stock ex New York Stock Exchange and the investments, of course. and also there is a yeah, relationship why between. We be? I mean, we're the largest. I mean, it it makes sense. Yes. We're the largest. Incarcerators in the world why exactly invest in the stock exchange. Well, I see, mean, this is why I'm trying to tell Miss Martinez is that these these immigrants, these detention centers, are all part of the economic plan and engine of capitalism. And for the people of the world, because they're not on the inside, they don't get a chance to see the ugly underbelly. What they're getting is the Entertainment Tonight News, right. the Hollywood. they see the cars, they see all these other images, and they, they come over here and, and get some money, and they look back on their own history and their own families and say, oh, we were in poverty, but actually you were in wealth. You didn't realize that the poverty is here, but it's a poverty of the mind, it's a poverty of the heart, okay, and it's a depravity that associates the, the devaluing of life itself. I'm sorry, continue. Oh, no, I was just saying, but get it, you know, she's been here since age four, right? So it's not like we're telling her anything new, but I'm thinking sometimes when it hits home, because, you know, I, I, I'm not going to, I have some friends also that are, you know, got in, incarcerated at ICE too. Certainly. And had she had to pay uh, cash money to get out. But yeah, they, I mean, I mean, Vince, we don't even mention the phone calls, like the click calls. Yes. The commissary. Oh, and, I mean, yeah. dang. I mean, well, just the phone calls alone. Yes. Are They're ridiculous. Making billions off of it. Yes. Absolutely. One minute. We've got to wind down here. we got yeah. about five minutes left, so we're going to have to. I was going to gonna add one thing. Just, you know, if I could talk to White Son for a minute. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's invoke him. <laughs> right. Why? Uh, Why? You know, when Vince mentions that their annual revenue of Corrections Corporation of America is $1.7 billion, that is 100% your tax money. Mm. So, yes. Yeah. yeah, Corrections Corporation of America is the biggest. Uh, I mean, I, I can't think of a m better example of a corporation that is just leeching onto the tax yeah. system. That yes. same, that same it's all year, tax money. That yes. same year uh, that I gave the stat for $1.7 billion, detention cost taxpayers $1.9 billion. Right. And it inflates every year <sighs> because up. they lobby so hard. They yes. throw a, a, right. some, a portion of that money into convincing them to spend to, more. Right. Not only do they lobby, they but, create people like Trump but, and this mm -hmm. image of we're protecting you sure. to but help the, the populace say we need these centers. We need to continue to incarcerate. But then, doesn't that uh, kind of support Trump's argument? Saying Which that, way? okay, if, if they're saying that, okay, it's our tax dollars that's causing, so the more people get locked up, the more we have to pay. They can right. use that as an argument. Against but see, they're not you saying the other side. Hold on, hold on, I'm, I, I, after, before 2012, I was an undocumented immigrant. Right. To defer action, I am now, I have work authorization. Okay. 
I had a tax ID. Absolutely. I did not have a social security number and I paid taxes. Absolutely. Yes. My parents have tax ID. They pay taxes. All of my family, cousins, aunts, uncles, my husband, Everybody. Yes. everyone yes. I know are undocumented immigrants and they pay taxes. So, I'm so glad you said that. That money is also coming from my paycheck. Y'all heard it here on the arena. They pay taxes. <laughs> yes, we do. So let, let me ask you this. You got about Lord. two minutes. Two minutes. Um, so what type of things are you and your family, your people, uh, doing to organize and fight yes. immigration, the, some of the immigration laws here in America? Well, we, we try to educate everyone that I know that, you know, may ha never dealt with an immigrant. Right. Uh, everyone looks at me and they automatically think I was born here. Right. Um, and I, you know, try to sit them down, hey, are you going to vote this year? Right. They say, no, hey, you need to really listen to who... You need to really listen to all these right. um, politicians in their platform. Oh, yeah, exactly. And, you know, I, I try to, my parents, my mom and my husband were at the visual and right. Stuart shut it down. Um, I try as much as I can to tell my friends, hey, if you hear someone talking bad about immigrants, tell them to call me and we'll sit down and have this right. conversation. Have right. Exactly. So it's just a matter of getting out there, not being afraid. At, at first, I was always afraid to talk about my status. Right. right. And I'm done with the fear. That's right. I need to get my we need to get out there and let them know exactly what the real deal is. We need okay. to tell everyone. We well, guys you got a conviction. Home. No, I do I want you to come back, but I wanted you to bring more people. Yes. I mean your husband. Yeah, you, well, he, right. he, we got issues. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. right. That's right. But I'm sure there's people plenty of people that will come forward. Right. Cuz you know and, and Kevin, we got to bring you said, you know, somebody who was affected by the kidnapping. Which kidnapped? Oh, Ayotzinapa? Uh, yeah. Well, she lives in California. <laughs> okay, well, anyway, we, we got we to gotta keep the door open because we got to right. keep having dialogue yeah. like yes. this because right. this is Trump awesome. is on the rise here. And we got to, this is the only media means that we got to, like said, expose the truth because, I mean, they, they'll try to flip it around and flip it around and, you know, um, make it seem like the immigrants are causing the problem. So, what? Yeah. What? Okay. Oh, okay. 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 So Let me, well, you said something about the immigrants causing the problems. Um, it's been said that they put a burden on our education system. Right. They put a burden on our jail system. Medical. And they, and they put a burden on our um, the education, medical. jail, and... Um, yeah, medical, right? Hospitals. Yeah, hospitals. Yeah, hospitals. Yeah. 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 Um, so how do you respond to that? I don't understand how we put a, a burden to medical. Let's just, okay. are you trying to say because we're coming in? And the sheer numbers. The, the, the numbers that they're coming in say uh, 10 undocumented immigrants get in a car accident and they have to go to the hospital. Great, right. Now, they don't have And you know, we, we can't apply for Medicaid and Medicare. Did you know that? It has to come okay. out of our pocket. No, okay. No, I did. That's why I'm asking you. That's, right. That's, well, that's it, making the because, point. Oh, because that's, 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 you made a good point. Right, right. So because, they have to pay out of pocket for their right. medical expenses. Mm -hmm. Because, okay, I just, because not that's, too long that's ago, the argument. I had my appendix removed. And, and you have to pay for it. Exactly. Because I do not qualify for Medicaid or Medicare because I only have a Social Security for work authorization. What about food stamps? What are you, I you don't know, have food stamps. They're coming into school, taking up all the free lunches. So now my kid can't get a free lunch. What do you say? No, For that, who? that's that's that's. <laughs> you know my. my <laughs> go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> she did right, right, right. Oh, <laughs> she oh, okay. 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 Go ahead. No, I mean, all these students that are taking up the free lunches are U.S. citizens, so I don't understand why they're taking away free that, lunches. That's the same argument saying all black folks be on boot stamps. Right. Yeah, it is. So it is. That. We got to wind it down. This is, you know, um, we only got like a minute left. It's a powerful comment. Thank you. Well, yes, thank you for coming yes. to the for arena. On, Lord. And, and you you, you, uh, you handled yourself you, you well. Held your, you held your own. Absolutely. You yes. spoke very well. Yes. And you spoke with conviction. Absolutely. I appreciate that. And I'm, I'm sorry your husband had been right. a victim of yeah. uh, good old American Southern racism. Yes. Yes. Finest. Yeah. <laughs> but believe me, we are victims. You're looking at victims here. 
And thank you, Kev, always coming yes, back sir, with Kevin. the information and your intellect. And this quick, is just a, a power. Go ahead, sir. Quick question, Kevin yeah, I, and, and uh, Laura. Why is Stewart still open when in 2012 the ACLU report recommended that ICE terminate terminate their contract with Corrections Corporations of in America a minute or less? Close Stewart down. Why sure. is it still open? Okay. Uh, so Stewart Detention Center is still open um, because the the report actually detailed a lot of human rights violations that breaks the standards and really should be shut down for that reason. However, a recent report, uh, this is August 2015, this just came out, just right. Right. National yeah. Immigration Justice Center, uh, NIJC, said that the immigration detention uh, system is monitored by ICE, but all they come in and do is they just do check, check the list. So, <laughs> for example, I was, I was talking earlier about how like medical facilities, for one, Stewart is supposed to have a certain number of medical personnel on staff. They've been right. down for years, right. but they come in there, they say, how many, you know, how many medical people are you supposed to have? And they say, oh, we're supposed to have this many. They say, okay, check. And they don't check. They don't actually look into it. The arena, right. give the website. So, yeah. Oh, oh, give the website. Yeah. So I want to tell people to go to shutdownstewart.com, and you can sign the petition. Uh, GeorgiaDetentionWatch.com, you can sign the petition to shut down Stewart. Uh, and... Hopefully we'll get somewhere with that. Shut Thank it you down. Shut our website. All right, the Arena Uncensored is Shut all going right. Go on YouTube. Down. We're on Facebook. And we'll be back in February. We out. Peace. Peace.